there. This is part two of how to make this sanding jig. Uh, if you haven't seen part one, you may very well want to take a look at that first to make sure you know what we're doing. And now we'll carry on, finish this. Hope you enjoy it. I'm ripping a maple board for the segment adjusters. Now I'm cutting the adjusters to length. My sled is 9 inches wide and I'm cutting the adjusters to 11 inches. I'm routing a groove down the middle of the adjuster. I have the router bit just over one half the height of the board. I have a stop on the far end of the fence and a line drawn to tell me when to stop pushing the board. I flip the board over to run the other side against the fence. This will make the groove slightly larger than the quarter inch bit. I raise the bit to the full thickness of the board and run the board through again. The slot is slightly larger than the bolt so it slides nicely without being sloppy. Before I go any further I'd better explain the choice of angles to cut the segments at. This is the math used to decide what measurements to use to cut the segments. Now look at the highlighted area. The segment angle is equal to 360, the number of degrees in a circle, divided by the number of segments and then divided by 2. This is because each segment will have two ends, which means there are actually 32 angles in a 16 segment ring. This means that the segment angle is equal to 360 degrees divided by 16 segments and then divided by 2, giving us a segment angle of 11.25 degrees. I hope I'm explaining this clearly. Feel free to pause and replay this section as often as you like. I'm not a mathematician either. I'm cutting the end of the adjuster that the segments will be sanded on at 22.5 degrees. That's because it is equal to the total of the two ends of a segment. This will make more sense in a minute. Now I have set up my miter saw at 11.25 degrees and installed my zero clearance bed and fence. I'm cutting off one end of the board that I will be cutting the segments from. To mark the segment for an 8 inch ring I set my calipers to 1.671 inches. The segments need to be 1.571 inches for the ring and I add that little bit to allow for sanding it away to adjust the segment. I use a square to draw the line across the board. Now I will set my bevel gauge to the angle I cut on the end of the board. I use the bevel gauge to mark the face so I can line it up with the slot on my miter saw.
With the board on the miter saw and the line on the slot, I position and lock down a stop to make every cut a consistent length. After each cut I just flip the board, push it against the stop and make the next cut. If I were making a ring that I wanted to look the best, I would flip the board and cut off the smallest amount I could. Then I would flip the board again and move it against the stop to cut the next segment. I would also number each segment as I cut it, so that I don't mix up the order that they are cut. This shows the sled in place with the hole down clamp and the hole I drilled to accommodate the quarter inch bolt. Alright, I have my segment adjuster on here now. As you can see, I've marked 16 on there, so that in the future I'll know this is the one I want for 16 segments. It's at cut at 22.5 degrees. These are cut at 11.25 on each side, a total of 22.5. And as you can see, when I push it up there, that causes the segment to be flush against the disc. Now, when I'm ready to work with it, I simply lock this down to hold that end, tighten this, and it's not going anywhere. Then I can start doing my adjustments. What I need to do to make sure that the segment's good on both sides, I don't want, if you can see the rough cuts that are there from the saw, I'll put marks on here on both sides. When those are all gone, then I have sanded both sides effectively. So I'll move it up, so I've got a little bit of a gap there, just enough so that I can sand both sides. I'll turn on the dust collector, the sander, and do both sides. I use hose clamps to tighten the ring of segments together. It's important to make sure that all of the segments line up properly, that none of them are sticking out a bit too far. As you can see in the pictures, when the segment ring is put together, there's a gap on the inside of some of the segments. To counter that, what we have to do is remove some material on the outside, just a little bit. To do that, we need to remove the segment adjuster here, and we need to kick it out a little bit at the back end. To do that, what I want to do is take just a little bit of masking tape, put it along here, put it back on, try it again, put the ring together and see if it's enough or too much, and then adjust it from there. I'm going to put a little bit of masking tape here. It's very thin. I'm going to put two layers on. And I'm going to sand them all again, put the ring back together, and see if that's done it. I have two layers of masking tape here now. I'm going to put this in here, push it up until it's tight. And I'm going to make a mark on here so I can tell exactly where it is if I need to change it again. So I'm going to move it up a little bit past that. Lock it back in position. Mark these to make sure I get them right.
Always be sure to sand until the segment is pushed against the fence. If you stop before hitting the fence, the segments will not be an even length. Well, it took two efforts, total of four layers of tape, but I do have it so there is no light showing between the segments and that's what I was looking for. Now what I do not want to do is leave that tape in there. Sooner or later it's going to wear out. So what I want to do is I want to make an adjusting block. I've made a larger segment, segment here, 11.25 uh, degrees on both sides. I'm going to sand that so that I can use it to adjust this fence. Now I'm going to take this masking tape off here. I'm going to mark the end. And I'm going to use this block I just made. Set it here, run this along here until the pencil marks are gone. And that'll let me know that it's done. Then I'm going to put it back on here. I'm going to re-sand all of those segments put them together in the clamp and see if I've still got no light and then I will know it's right. There are no gaps again so the segment adjuster is calibrated properly. Occasionally, no matter how well your segment adjuster is calibrated, you will find that there are gaps between your segments. A slight waver when sanding the segments that you don't even notice can be enough to cause your ring to be less than perfect. When this happens, you can glue the ring up with the half ring method as I'm doing here. To use the half ring method, just put a piece of dowel between segments on opposite sides of the ring. When you tighten the hose clamp, the dowels will allow the halves of the ring to swivel a bit and this will cause the other joints to tighten up. Once you have done a dry fit to be sure it works, you can glue the other segments. As the flashlight shows, there are no gaps between the segments and it is ready to be glued up. To glue the half rings, I remove the hose clamp and then put masking tape on the faces of the segments that I don't want to glue. You don't really need to do this if you can remember to not put glue on these surfaces. That might explain why I choose to do this. Once the masking tape is on these segments, I put some glue on my work surface if it is a material that glue won't adhere to or on wax paper. Now I can use a brush to put glue on all the surfaces that are to be glued together. I use the rub joint method. I rub the glued surfaces together to be sure the glue is well spread and then hold them together for a few seconds. That's all it takes to get the glue to start to hold.
Oh yeah, forgot to use the carousel which makes it much easier to do this. Once the glue is spread on all the joints, it's just a matter of putting the hose clamp on and tightening it. Tighten it a few times as the glue will continue to migrate out of the joint while it is under pressure. This had all made for the glue to dry, so now I just have to take it apart and glue the two halves together. To do that, I'm just taking off the masking tape. I'll put some pencil marks on each end of these so I can tell when they've sanded evenly on the disc sander. One face on each half of the ring should be sanded so the half rings will lie flat on the bed. Sand the ends of the segments lightly to remove the pencil marks and make the half rings line up without gaps. There are no gaps now, I can't see any light through those, so I just have to glue the two sides together. Okay, that concludes the two parts on how to build the sanding jig and how to use it to do segmented turning. Um, I hope you've enjoyed it. If you have, tell your friends. If you haven't, please tell me. I am always looking for ways to improve, so leave a comment if there's something I can do to make things better. Thank you for watching. Have a great time with your wood turning. See you next time.